Hi there. So you might be sitting there thinking, now why would you want a green screen anyway? Well, let me see if I can explain. I have four hobbies. I've got many, many interests, but four of them that I pursue diligently enough that I consider them hobbies. The first one, the thing I like the best, is wood turning and I've given most of the videos that I've put out have been wood turning. Second hobby is general woodworking, what I call flat work. I've done some videos on that. This is another one. Third thing, fairly recent addition to the hobby list is my CNC router. I really like working with that. Got a long way to go on learning what to do with it but I'm enjoying the journey. And the fourth thing is video editing and that's why I do these. Aside from the fact that I spend a lot of time turning something or building something, I spend sometimes more time just editing video and I like playing around with it. Now having a green screen means that I can suddenly decide that I want to be on a beach somewhere or sitting quietly somewhere reading a book, whatever I want. I can put any background behind me that I want to. If I want to, and it's not often, I can even bring the idiot in here for a minute or two. <laughs> Yeah, he's playing the blasters again, so it'll be a while getting him to settle down. But you know, one of the things about video editing, I can get rid of him just like that. So anyway, all kidding aside, and by the way, I'm doing this for fun, so don't expect too much seriousness out of me at any time. But now, let me take you through the journey of building the hanging system I have for this green screen to make it work for me in my shop. Hope you'll stick around, there's some actual woodworking done in this one. On a sheet of plywood, I have drawn out four shapes like this. They are going to be used as the supports for the green screen. This point right here is the center of what will be a 2 and 3 8 inch hole. That is going to support an ABS pipe that's 2 inch inside diameter and 2 and 3 8 inch outside diameter. So now I'm going to take the plywood over to the table saw and cut these free. The next step is using the miter saw to cut them to length. When I cut it out on the band saw, I like to stay just outside the line and then I will clean it up with the spindle sander. Now that I've finished with these at the spindle sander, I've clamped them together, used a straight edge here to make sure that they're all at the same spot. Got a square on here to make sure they're square to it, so they should be all identical. And I'm doing that so that I can drill all of them at the same time, making sure that they are in the same spot. To keep them this way, so I can put them on the drill press, I'm going to run a few beads of hot glue across here, here, on the two ends, and after that cools, I'll turn it over and do this side as well. 
Now the reason I want to do this side as well is because after I've got it drilled, I'm going to take this back to the spindle sander because these are not perfect. They don't line up just perfect and I'm a bit of a fanatic so I guess that's what I'll do. So I'll, first thing, I believe this glue is hot enough. Run some beads along here. And I'll be back when I'm ready to start drilling this. I have two pieces of quarter inch plywood underneath this just to make sure that the bit does not go down and hit my drill press table. So now I'm going to drill down through these. And there I have them, all four of them. What I did was I used a putty knife to peel the glue off of this side and off of this side. And then I ran them through the spindle sander again just to make them as close to perfect as I could. Then while the glue was still on the ends and up here, I put a Bessie clamp across like this to hold them so they wouldn't come apart. Peeled the rest of the glue off put them through the spindle sander again, and now if these are not identical, they're certainly as close as I can make them. Now, the next thing I want to do is make something to hang these on the wall. So the wall will be here, and this will be hanging out this way. I haven't quite decided if I want it this way or this way. Whatever, it doesn't make a big difference. And this is what I'm going to use to hang them. I've got four of these. They're an inch thick, two inches wide, seven inches long. Let me just set up and show you how I'm going to do that. In order to hang this on the wall, I'm going to use a dovetail slot in the piece that hangs on the wall. I'll pass it through the dovetail bit, and I don't want it to go all the way through because if I put a dovetail on the end of this and drop it in there, there's no use having it fall all the way through. So I've made a mark about an inch back from the end of the bit. When it gets to that point, I will very carefully draw it back through. It's going to be packed with sawdust, so I have to drag it through while it's running very carefully to make sure that I can get that back. I don't want to lift it up and tear this out, obviously. Then I will take this, and I'll pass each side past the bit after I have set it up properly, and then that slot will go down in this. So, first of all, hearing protection, then the dust collector, and let's make this pass. And there's my slot, ready to accept the dovetail. I did some test cuts setting this up using a piece of plywood scrap that's the same thickness as this and put a dovetail on here. I moved this fence back and forth until I got it so it just got the right amount taken off. Now when I put it in one of these blocks, it fits in there great. It's a little bit snug but I'd rather have that than have it be loose. So now, I want to take this piece, hold it up on end with a board that's going to keep it plumb and run it through there on this side, flip it around and run it through on that side. So let's do that now. Hearing protection again, dust collector.
there we are, nice and snug. One thing I maybe should have mentioned is that when you finish doing the slot and you go to do this cut, you have to make sure that the bit stays at exactly the same height. All right, I'll do the rest of these. I'll be back. There they are. They're all finished. Like the fit, they're nice and snug. And when I put it in here, you can see that there's a little bit protruding at the top. And I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but you can also see the notch below there. So now what I want to do is take this out, cut a little bit of a, about a quarter of an inch off of here, and that way when it goes in there, it'll be more or less flush at the top, and it will hide that little slot. So that's my next step. I'm going to take 3 16 of an inch off, that's what this mark is for. So first I'll do that cut with my flush cut saw. And now I'll cut off along here to remove that little tab. All right, now that should fit in here. It's a little lower than there, but it does hide that, that slot, and that's what I was looking for. So now I'll do the rest of them. Okay, I'm just about ready to put these on the wall. Now, the last step I did, I didn't bother recording. I'm going to assume if you're a woodworker, you know how to drill a hole. So you can see I've got the screws through here. What I did was first I used a 1964 inch bit and I chose that size simply because it's the biggest that would fit inside this slot. And I countersunk two holes just deep enough for the head of these screws to go into. Then I used an 11 64 bit to go all the way through and because it's countersunk, these are tight. These are tight. Because it's countersunk, this will still slide in there. I don't know if you can see the heads of the screws. And now, I'm about ready to put them on the wall. And I'm not gonna climb up on the ladder and try to tell you what I'm doing while I'm up there, so I'll just show you after they're finished. I'll be back. Yeah, I know. I said I wasn't gonna get up on a ladder and talk to you. But I might as well show you what I'm doing. I found the stud. Now I just want to put this screw in here first. Use the lever to make sure it's plumb. Then I'll get the other screw in there. There we go. Now I just got three more to put up. We'll carry on from there. All right, it's up and it's even straight. Unfortunately, as you can see, I'm going to have to take my coke clock down, but I'm sure I can find a place for it. My original intention was to have just two supports, one at each end, but the green screen, of course, is going to be way too heavy to keep that straight. And the idea was I would be able to put some kind of a crank system on it so I could just roll the screen up onto that ABS pipe. It's not going to work. So I'll have to come up with something else. I'm thinking maybe another pipe on the bottom and just roll it up by hand and use bungee cords or something to hold it up there. So I'm gonna work on that. And my wife is gonna put some slots in the screen so that it can be hung up there and I'll be back to show you how that comes out in a little while. Won't seem like too long to you. And now, with a little help from my lovely assistant, 
aka she who must be obeyed, although I'm pretty sure she prefers Gail, will put this up. Looking forward to seeing just how this works, how well it works. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I gotta find out how to use it. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that. I know I did it because it's fun for me and I hope it's a little bit of fun for you too. I wanna sincerely thank my wife. I could not have got that up there by myself. It was just too awkward, or at least it would have been really taxing to do so. So, thank you for joining me. I hope you'll come back next time. Have a great day in your shop. Be safe and have some fun yourself too. Don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to you dropping into my shop anytime you like. Take care now.